everyone, it's Mari Clark here for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. Happy International Scrapbooking Day. I'm so excited to bring you a scrapbooking process today as part of our celebration. And I'm going to start off by showing you the beautiful products from Crafters Companion that I'm going to be using for my project today. I am going to be starting off here with this gorgeous paper pad. This is a 12 by 12 paper pad from the Bohemian collection. It is absolutely stunning. You can just see here as I flip through this pad all of the beautiful colors that are part of this collection. One side of the paper has the beautiful floral and the opposite side of the paper has more of a kind of a neutral pattern. It's still got the beautiful colors but not as much of the bold florals. So just really love the versatility. You get many sheets of each of the different patterns here and it's a really nice weight of paper as well so really gorgeous for creating all kinds of different projects. Now I've chosen out these three papers and I am going to use the more neutral side of the paper for my project today. I am going to be cutting strips of these papers to create some color in my project. <clears throat> I also matched up the papers to some distress oxide inks as well and I'm going to be doing a little bit of mixed media. The focus for my project today is going to be creating texture and dimension on the project and I'm going to show you some ways that you can do that in your scrapbooking. I'm going to use a little bit of mixed media as I said to do this as well and so these are some of the colors that I thought about using and set out. I don't end up using all of those but I like to do that with my ink pads just to kind of get an idea of what I want to use. Now this is the gorgeous um, blossoming mandala stencil that's part of that bohemian collection. This is just a really great little stencil. It has this circle pattern in it that's got all of this really fun detail. It's really a great way to create some texture on your background. So I'm starting off here with a piece of Vicki Booten foundations paper and then the stencil. I'm running some all to new embossing paste through the stencil. This is just a really nice white texture paste that creates just the most beautiful type of texture on your background. So here you can just see, I'm just trying to create a variety of different areas for this texture on my background so that even though I am going to cover a lot of this up with some color, there's also going to be spaces where it's just going to remain white. So I started here with the color where I've just put down a little bit of the picked raspberry distress oxide ink over on my glass mat. I just smooshed the ink out onto my mat and I added some water to it and I picked it up with a little bit of plastic packaging to apply it to my texture paste. I think I probably forgot to mention I did let that texture paste dry for some time and so I'm working on the texture paste now. It's perfectly dry and I'm adding some water and ink onto that dry texture paste onto my paper. So I'm just taking a paintbrush here to help move this pick ra picked raspberry ink on that texture background. I'm doing kind of a process of splattering and just moving that ink so that I do create just this really pretty kind of pink strip of color. I'll do the same type of process here with the Villainous Potion. I love this color of purple. I think it's really pretty. I actually end up using a little bit of prize ribbon over top of this just to add a little bit more of that blue back in and so that I'm trying to match it up with that one color of pattern paper that I chose from the paper pad. Using the exact same technique for each one of these different colored strips here. Again, just trying to create these little swatches of color on the top of my project. These uh, little splatters that I'm doing here are also going to help add texture to the project. So we've got the texture paste for the for the texture and now we've, we're adding these splatters and that splatter pattern is definitely going to create that texture as well. Taking my heat tool now just to go ahead and dry that a little bit and now I'm going to take the combination of the salvage patina and the um, not the faded jeans but the stormy sky and just to create a little bit of that greeny blue over to the side as well. Again, 
matching up with that pattern paper. I will kind of bring the pattern paper in every once in a while just to make sure that I'm happy with the color swatching that I'm getting here. And I am going to be adding the pattern paper over top of these different areas. So again, all of the mixed media is not going to show. It's just going to kind of peek out around the patterned paper. So you'll see the method to my madness here as the process continues. Now I wanted to add, like I said, a little bit of that blue prize ribbon in here as well. And I think I did drop a little bit of salvage patina in here and there also. And I do then end up going in with a little bit of worn lipstick into the pink area just to create that little bit of coral tone as well. And that's just going to help me bring in the different tones that are in the paper, splattering with all of these different colors as I go. And now you can just see how gorgeous this looks over top of that texture paste. We're getting so much dimension and depth in the project already in this background uh, before we even start to add our layers on top. So this is a process that I just love to do with my with my scrapbooking. Um, it's so much fun. It's I love to create my own backgrounds and then add the pattern paper and different products on top. Now I'm just, I have cut three and a half inch strips of each of those different papers. And now what I'm gonna do is just tear each one of those strips on an angle and layer those over top of these mixed media areas. And my idea here is to make sure that some of the mixed media is peeking out. So I don't wanna entirely cut it up. That's why the strips of paper are as narrow as they are. And I wanna make sure that I I'm tearing them short enough so that that little bit of mixed media is poking out the bottom. So I'll do that same thing with each of the papers, tearing them at an angle, and then you'll just see me just kind of distressing and rolling the edge of that paper up a little bit. And that again is just going to create so much texture and dimension just by giving the edge of that paper that little bit of roll. And it's I really like how that looks. So now I'm just kind of eyeballing this here to see now if I like the length of all of these papers. I'm now going to take my scissors that are for cutting fringe. So these are the fringe scissors. And I've taken some of the leftover paper from the strips and I'm going to fringe the leftover strip there for each of those different color papers and that's going to be another texture layer over top of that paper. So I'm going to match paper to paper so each of the matching papers is going to go on top of that same paper and I'll trim that off and I'm going to sew across the top with my sewing machine so that and now I'll just take my fingers and just roll that a little bit and this is just going to create this really fun fringy detail on that paper and uh, so much texture here with these pieces just an incredible amount of texture and dimension to the project with all of these different techniques so far so I really love these I think they're super cute now I have also taken the um, build a sorry not build a dream catcher heavenly boho feathers stamp and coordinating die set and what I did was I stamped the feathers out with embossing ink and then I added gold embossing powder over top and heated that up and melted it for those six feathers and I'm going, to, I'm going to be using those for embellishments. This is the Build a Dream Catcher die set and these die sets are just perfect for making embellishments. There's all kinds of little bits that are part of the set but I wanted to focus on these little hearts and then the little die that cuts the little string with paper. So I'm going to use each one of these adorable little hearts and the little um, die cut paper here that looks like string to um, combine them together to add that little bit of a look that makes it look like they're strung together in that way. And I'll just simply glue those little pa papers onto the hearts. Now th these are the photos I'm going to be using. This is one of the photos. I've cut these first two photos that I'm going to be using into tiny little squares. I've printed these in black and white and I'm just going to go ahead and add some uh, craft foam on the back and then glue that or adhere that onto a little piece of white cardstock that's just going to create a little bit of border around my black and white photo. Now the reason why I trim these up so tiny is to get some extra photos on my project. So 
In this way, I can get two photos up at the top and now there's room at the bottom for some more details, including another photograph. So I'm just gonna take my scissors now and I'm going to cut away a little area at the bottom of my foundations paper. I'll take some really sharp scissors here and just distress that. I didn't tear the paper because I find this paper is so heavy and strong that it's easier to just cut it and then distress it. Um, Vicky's foundations paper is amazing to work on when you're using mixed media techniques and it, it is a strong, strong paper. So um, like I said, I didn't rip it. I just used the scissors there and now you can just see I'm just really distressing that little bit of tear away at the bottom. Now I'm going to take one of the coordinating papers. This is part of the strip that was left over from the 12 by 12 paper that I trimmed for the top area. I love the color of this paper. It is so pretty. Um, I did put a little bit of a lighter filter on this video, so I'm not sure if these colors are really popping um, as they do in person, but the gorgeous colors in this Bohemian collection are just unbelievable I really love them so I'm just going to put that purple at the bottom which is so pretty and now I'm going to start to commit and get things adhered down so those three strips at the top I'm just going to take and glue with some liquid adhesive there is quite a bit of mixed media underneath there so I did want to use a really nice strong liquid adhesive for this process so that they do stay adhered at the top and so I'm just gonna get those glued down there. I'll put a paperweight on those and make sure that those are really well adhered. And once I've got those in place, I'm gonna start working on the other details. So these are those little feather die cuts that I created with the Heavenly Boho Feathers stamp and coordinating die set. Love these. Uh, there's just no end to how you can use stamps and dies when you're scrapbooking. So I didn't have any ephemera for this project. There was no ephemera pack at all. I didn't need one because you can create your own. You can fussy cut the papers, you can use the stamps and coordinating dies, stencils, all the things to create the different embellishments and details that you need. So I'm just gonna take the little heart cutaways that were part of the um, of that die set and just put it into the center of those little hearts. And this is kind of the placement that I'm gonna go for with those photos. Now I'm going to take a fourth one of these uh, die cuts from the Build a Dream Catcher set and add that onto one of the pattern papers that I've trimmed out in that same heart shape. And I'll just go ahead and adhere those together. That's just going to be a little backer for the heart. I created that patterned paper shape just by tracing the heart onto some pattern paper and then fussy cutting it out. And now that I've got that all trimmed out, I'm going to be adding that on here. Now, I didn't have any titles to work with from the collection. So I grabbed that from the American Crafts Gingham collection. That is a puffy sticker, or a, a, I don't know what you call these. I think just puffy stickers. It's a thick sticker that has the word capture on it and it's in gold. The reason why it might be kind of, um, you can't see the word capture very well in some of the photos is because it is a metallic gold. So it kind of gets distorted a little bit in some of the photos. So I just put another little um, puffy piece there in the shape of a star on that word capture. And I'm gonna add some more little of bits of these stickers here as well, these little gold stars into the centers of the hearts. And now I have printed off all of my journaling. I just typed these with my antique typewriter and I have cut them into strips just with my trimmer. I'm putting some foam adhesive on the back and now I'm just using my ruler just to make sure that I have these on here straight. And I'll do that with each strip to make sure that all of my journaling strips are the same distance from the bottom of the paper for each one. So those strips are all in place now. I've added a few other little stick heart stickers onto the project as well to fill in some of that area there. And now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just kind of looking at it and deciding what detail I want next. And of course, it's going to be white splatter. So I have some Dina Wakely gloss spray in white poured out onto my silicone mat. I love the silicone mat from scrapbook.com, by the way, it is fantastic to work on. 
and I'm going to just go ahead and do a generous amount of white splatter. You can see I have my photos covered up and any area where there's text. Anything that I don't want distorted by white I've had covered up there. Now that's dry and I'm going in with a little bit of gold medium. This one is happens to be a Jane Davenport Star Power ink in gold and I'm splattering with that just to add a little bit of gold as well just to kind of go along with the gold embossing on those feathers and the pattern paper actually does have kind of like a faux metallic splatter on it as well so I wanted to just bring a little bit of gold in also I guess also I did have that little bit of gold with the word capture and those little gold stars that I added too so I'm just adding in that and now that is all done it is dry you can see how really pretty that is I love how this is looking but I did want to add another photo down in the bottom area so you'll see me doing that here pretty quick another thing I wanted to mention is that there are giveaways involved in this international scrapbooking day event with uh, scrapbook on cards today magazine so make sure you check out the description box below for any information about a giveaway make sure that you do all the things to get entered for our giveaway and also make sure that you go to all of the other creators today and watch their videos and check out um, the giveaway information on those videos as well so there you can just see that last black and white photo I'm adhering down at the bottom I'll just use my ruler to make sure that I have that photo on there straight as well I love this particular ruler because it has um, all of the measurements um, up to 1 to 16 on it, which is really great when you're doing some precision measuring and really wanting to make sure that you have things super straight on your project. Friends, I really love how this turned out. I love all of the texture and dimension and the mixed media that's created here. I love how I was able to get three photos on this project, the larger focal uh, photo on the bottom, and then the other two additional little photos at the top. I think it's really sweet. I really enjoyed creating this today. And again, I just want to say happy National Scrapbooking Day. See you again, friends. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>